Hey guys, what is up? Well, it's going to be the Skydio 2, which is going to be in people's hands as soon as November of 2019. So this drone is amazing. Amazing. I mean, I've seen a lot of videos online and it just blows me away. Never thought that this would happen so soon. In fact, it was a surprise. I wasn't really familiar with the Skydio 1. And so now I'm definitely familiar with the Skydio 2. Totally excited about it. And I'm sure if you've already seen videos and information about this drone, then it could be a killer drone. Of course, I've done a lot of videos on the DJI Mavic, the Mavic Pro, the Mavic Air, and I kind of got to a point where I wasn't expecting any significant changes, anything exciting to bring me back to the DJI drone world until the Skydio 2 dropped. Skydio 2 is amazing because it's evolutionary instead of what DJI has been doing is they've just been really increasing some features, improving some features, but they kind of got stuck in that area and didn't really look at the next evolution and I'm sure they're planning some other new drones, but here we are with Skydio 2. So let's get started by first showing some of my favorite clips on the Skydio 2 that I've found and just kind of talk to those once we watch them. Holy sh! this scared me. Don't you ever go in somebody's yard ever again. So let's go ahead and review what we just saw in those video clips. First off, DJI drones detect objects basically one direction at a time. Skydio, on the other hand, detects, records, and constantly calculates everything in 360. This is what's so amazing but makes obvious sense because the drone, after all, does fly in a 360 space. And as a side note, DJI's APAS system only detects and flies in only about a 90 degree field of view and that is only for the front and the back. Alright, so let's go over the general specifications. This drone has 7 4K cameras. 7 4K cameras. The front video camera is 4K, 60 frames per second. HDR so high dynamic range which is perfect because when the drone flies into dark and light areas you'll be able to pick up better detail in the light and dark areas instead of getting one area that's blown out or another area that's too dark where it's just black that's perfect this is perfect for what I would deem now as an action drone camera 100 megabits per second data rate and it has both the H.254 and H.265 codecs and on a three axis gimbal. Now the other six cameras are for navigation and they're 4K and they're set up in a trinocular configuration, meaning that there's three cameras up on the top and three cameras down at the bottom. And this part is so simple and also ingenious. The top set of trinocular cameras being on the top are actually above the front propellers. Now why is that so important? Well when the drone flies forward, the drone needs to tilt forward to fly forward. So the cameras on top will face forward unblocked by the arms and the propellers. So simple, so brilliant. Drone size, 8.8 .8 inches long, that's from front to back, 10.7 inches wide, that's from left to right, and 2.9 inches high. Now when you compare the footprint of this drone with let's say the Mavic Pro, the Mavic Pro is actually a little bit longer and a little bit wider. Drone weight, 1.75 pounds, 775 grams. Compared to the Mavic Pro, it's a little bit heavier. Mavic Pro is 734 grams. Mavic 2 is 907 grams. Case size, it's 11.7 .7 inches long, 10 inches wide, and 2.6 inches deep. Max flight speed, 36 miles per hour. Max range, 3.5 kilometers or 11,500 feet with the controller. 1.5 kilometers or 5,000 feet 
with the beacon and 200 meters or about 600 feet with just the phone only using Wi-Fi. Flight duration, 23 minutes. The battery attaches to the drone magnetically and also acts as a landing gear. There are no legs on the arms of the drone, so the battery is what acts as a landing gear. Pricing for the drone itself, which also includes a battery, it's $999. The controller, not included, is an extra $149. The beacon is extra at $149 and extra batteries are $99. There is one battery that's included with the drone itself. All right, so there's three ways to fly and control your drone. You've got the beacon, you've got your phone, and you've got the controller. There's pros and cons to each one of them, so it's important to understand those. I'm not gonna be able to go into detail, but I'm gonna cover some of the highlights here so you have a good understanding of what some of the main differences are. I'm gonna start off with the phone because, well, you don't need to buy it extra, so let's cover that first. So when using just the phone and the Skydio app, the main limitation is the range. You're gonna be limited to 200 meters or 600 feet. And I believe that's gonna be really under optimal conditions because it just works off of Wi-Fi only. On the left side of the app, you'll see buttons to adjust the height, the right side to adjust the range, and then the two little buttons in between that have this arrow pointing to the right and arrow pointing to the left there to allow you to rotate the drone around you clockwise or counterclockwise relative to your position. The center display, I believe, is a relative position indicator. So where the drone is relative to where you're standing. Down at the bottom left is the follow button, which I believe initiates tracking your subject. The hamburger symbol next to it, I believe, is to adjust your camera settings. The red button in the middle actually spins with a red color when the camera is recording. The home button, I believe, is for the drone to return back home. Not sure on that. And then the map symbol on the very right will show you the drone location and your location on a full-size map. So here's some of the flight modes. You've got follow, which is what you've seen most of the videos for, similar to DJI's active track, orbit, which is where the drone flies in a circle around the subject. Cable, which is where you set two waypoints for the drone to fly between. Hover is just as it implies. It puts the drone in position instead of moving around. Smooth, not sure what that is. Compass, not sure what that is. If you know about some of these flight modes or some other flight modes that aren't on here, please put a comment down in the description below. All right, so moving on to beacon control. The main benefit of beacon control is it has a very strong GPS signal, stronger than your phone. So that helps the drone identify your location even when you're behind objects. And the beacon also has eight quadrants where you can set the drone to be in a fixed position relative to your position as you're moving. So for example, you have front, front right, back, and so on. There's also a one touch drony button. Moving on to the controller, there's really not a lot more to cover about the controller except that you'll have the joysticks to be able to better manually control the drone. And most importantly, you'll have extended maximum range using the controller, 3.5 kilometers, equivalent to 11,500 feet. So now I'm going to talk to some of the additional specs of the drone. With phone only control and while tracking an object, maximum height is eight meters or about 27 feet. If the subject is a vehicle, the max height is 60 meters or about 54 feet. Now, when the Skydio is not tracking a subject, the maximum height is 1,640 feet, regardless of what control option you're using. And in general, when tracking a subject, Skydio 2 will nominally stay within 10 feet or 33 feet of the subject. That's overall distance in relation to the person being followed, or 20 meters or about 66 feet if tracking a car. Dynamic return to home. This is obviously an important feature with this type of drone because you want the drone to return to where you're located because most likely the drone is tracking you. And so you don't want the drone to return back to where you took off. You want it to land near where you are located. Camera. Focal length is 20 millimeters equivalent. The Mavic Pro is 26. The Mavic 2 Pro is 28. The Mavic 2 Zoom is 24 to 48. And the Mavic Air is 24. So you have a much wider field of view, which is better when tracking an object to keep in frame better. Quality test and comparison. There is a report that was done by Skydio and a third party company 
There's a link in the description if you want to check that out. Supercomputer with a graphic processing unit. With the six navigation cameras and the processing associated with recording and processing 3D space, you do need a very powerful computer. The computer that is used is the NVIDIA Jetson TX2. There's a link in the description if you want to check that out. The drone frame, it's built out of magnesium alloy. So you're going to get superior durability with the magnesium alloy. And of course, it doesn't have folding arms. So that in itself is going to be a lot more durable. Free repair or replacement as long as you fly within Skydia's safe flight guidelines. Link in the description below if you want to read that in detail. And lastly, no geofencing. So no no-fly zones that will be programmed into the drone. At least currently, that might change. All right guys, so that is it. Hopefully you found this video to be a little bit more informative than some of the other videos out there. And if you did find this video helpful in some way, then please hit that like button. And as always, happy flying.